So even I would admit this is a little bit self-serving and I probably shouldn't do it. But hey, we're making content every day on this channel. Make sure you subscribe. That would rock. I'll come and give you a big old hug. So I thought, well, we've got plenty of time to talk about all the other nonsense. So today, I'm going to talk about nonsense on my own. There is no need to point. But here's the deal. If you've watched my content for a long time, especially over on What Coach Wrestling, make sure you subscribe to them as well. You will know I consider myself a Positive Pete Wrestling fan. In fact, if you go to the homepage of this channel, you will see that it says the Positive Corner of Wrestling. And also, I'm going to bring back the Simon Miller podcast very soon. And I'm calling it Simon Miller's Positive Wrestling Podcast or something like that, right? That I'm putting the word in there because I think as the weeks and the days and the months go on, in the sports entertainment industry the negativity and the sheer finger pointing which i just did admittedly gets worse and worse and sometimes you get a very average segment right let's use one and most recent example so on last week's episode of smackdown i'm recording this on the 15th of july happy summer if you are here in the uk it's raining which makes me laugh we had tiffany stratton and bailey and nia Jax all yelling at each other was it the best thing i'd ever seen no was it the worst thing i'd ever seen no was some of the scripting a little bit nobody talks like that absolutely i said i thought it was fine it was okay and I like the direction we were going in because Bailey is finally going to have a proper program with someone like Nia Jax. And that's just good old school wrestling. You've got the good, good guy and the bad, bad guy. My word, you get absolutely dragged over the coals. Now, I was looking for the positive at always. So this is probably a good thing because people now have a high bar. Their expectations are actually quite up there when it comes to wrestling. But if you were going to start criticizing that stuff, once again, there is so much programming on television. Sometimes you're just going to have to accept that an episode of SmackDown or episode of raw dynamite collision rampage is going to be a little bit lackluster because again i host a show called ups and downs you can't really super appreciate the golden ups if you don't get some middling episodes and some crap in there as well now nobody wants to do the crap but it's just the law of averages however the other i suppose criticism that does get thrown my way a lot is people say ah oh, simon you are so positive actually there's two things i want to talk about one simon you are so positive you are responsible for wrestling companies not getting better no i'm not well, absolutely not. Because I'm not lying to you, right? This is point number two. People have decided that if you actually try and find the best in professional wrestling and you try to enjoy it and you try to ignore the negatives and focus on the positives, excuse me for using the same words, that it means you are putting out there a false narrative because you just want to live in happy dappy doodah land and there is nothing transparent and there is nothing honest about you. To those people, I say this, kiss my tookers. I genuinely mean it, which actually ties in to secret point number three. If somebody comes and says something really really horrible to me on social media nine times out of ten i ignore it and on that tenth time i'm like man i'm gonna roast you you son of a gun you can't talk to people like that and what's the reply it's the same kind of thing oh well look mr positive is now being an absolute dick too it's like no 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 that's not what positivity is it ties into that old saying don't mistake my niceness for weakness right being positive doesn't mean you're a pushover being positive doesn't mean you're a liar being positive doesn't mean you watch a wrestling segment and inside you're dying in your tum tum going oh i don't like it, but I have to go and say nice things. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It's about just taking a little bit of a different stance. Go, well, what happened here? What came before it? What's happening in this person's personal life? Maybe right now they're not in the best headspace to try and perform. And you take all of these thoughts and you put them into a video because I think it gives it a bit more weight and a bit more depth. But my word, and I sick and tired, I say it for a second time, of people acting like I would actually ever go on a video and make some stuff up because I want to live in la la land. What would be the point? What is the point of making content and just because you can't handle the fact the finger is back just because you can't handle the fact that i like something and you don't doesn't give you the right to be an absolute butt munch all right i genuinely mean it now you don't have to watch my content you don't have to like me you don't have to like what i say you can sit there and go how the hell did that bull guy ever get any kind of a platform and i would say you know what that's great you're allowed your opinion and i respect the fact that we live in a country and we live in a world where you're allowed to air it but when you try and switch it and pretend i'm making stuff up that's what I'm like, nah, it's not the truth. It's just not happening, okay? It's professional wrestling. It's the most important of the least important things. Even if I see something that's absolutely hoo-bar, I can still go, well, you know, let's not go too crazy here because, again, we're talking about real people. We're talking about people that have actual emotions. And also, I like to try and be quite empathetic with these things. That's not a word, empathetic with these things. There are videos that I've done, which is my industry, I suppose, which suck. Now, sometimes they suck because I had a bad day, and sometimes they suck because I had other things going on in my life, and I wasn't able to hit the go button 
as much as I wanted. And do you not think a wrestler that is traveling here, there, and everywhere and has to deal with this constant noise in their air isn't going to drop the ball from time to time? Of course they would. But I promise you, every single thing that comes out of my mouth is how I feel. If something's bad, I'll tell you it's bad, but I'll do it in a bit of a Care Bear way because the Care Bears are awesome. Like, take Elmo. If you ever meet someone, I know he's not a Care Bear, but if you ever meet someone who doesn't like Elmo, get away from that person because they're probably a psychopath or a serial killer. There's just not enough of it in pro wrestling. And that doesn't mean to say that I have to be the guy doing it. It doesn't even have to say that it has to exist to begin with. Because it's the way that I feel about prof professional wrestling, it's almost like there's a niche there. And one day I thought, oh, I could just move myself into that niche because it relates to my tastes. And also, yeah, don't think you can just come and be an absolute dick to me on the internet. I'm just going to take it like, oh, I can't say anything. No, I ain't no wimp. I ain't no wuss. Um, I ignore you most of the time. And then I block you and you get mad and you send me messages on different social media platforms saying, oh, why did you block me? Then I go through your tweets and I see the really rude one. I'm like, uh, that's why. The fact you can't see it is the reason I blocked you to begin with. But that is not how this works. You cannot pretend just because, okay, you know what? I watched this Rex in segment. It wasn't too bad. But you can come and call me sometimes very offensive things. And the positive way to deal with that, actually, the positive way to deal with it is to just ignore it. But I am allowed to come back at you. If you come into my house and say horrible things, I'm allowed to say, go away. You absolute goober. I think you're a pile of shit. I just am. The fact that you can't see that just kind of ties into the egotistical way you are approaching and watching all of this. It drives me nuts every now and then. Not really. It probably drives me nuts once every 365 days, but we're on that one day. I just think we have to get back to a point where we should be trying to get to a point where we can have really cool discourse about professional wrestling. Let's say you did watch that Bailey segment and you thought genuinely it was the worst thing you'd ever seen. That would be awesome if I could somehow get you onto the show or onto the video, whatever it may be, and get your points of view and get your thoughts and you could actually give me some deep reasoning about how we could make this better, how we could do this with Bailey, why it's not working with Nia Jax, what Tiffany Stratton needs to do to continue to evolve into a complete performer. But no, you just get, you don't know what you're talking about, you AEW shill, or no, it's AEW dick rider or WWE shill. Now, people have been saying this to me for eight years because apparently I'm trying to get a content, a contract, right? Now, this is embarrassing really on my end because if that is my goal, if my goal for the better part of a decade has to be trying to get a contract with AEW or WWE, I have completely failed in almost 10 years. I have no AW contract. I have no WWE contract. And I will tell you this as we are on my own channel. Not once has anybody ever got in touch with me and said, Simon, you should give this an up or Simon, you should give this a down or Simon, you should say this. Have I talked to some wrestlers about my opinions? Absolutely. And you know what? To a fault, or oh, that's not the right phrase, but to um, an end, whatever the right word would be, every single one of them is happy to discuss it and they laugh about it when I meet them in person. They say, oh, I didn't really agree with this or something. They go, man, that was totally spot on and we do have this intelligent discourse which goes to show there's no tribalism with the wrestlers themselves they're just happy to well i mean they have ambitions and they have motivation but most of them are just happy to try and improve their little bubble they do have be on aew or wwe and it's everybody else trying to set fire for things and look man as i've always just said if you want to go set fire you can set fire but don't expect to get burned a little bit from this bored idiot when you do start playing with the flame so i just thought it'd be good to get it out there as we do try and do more wrestling stuff on my own kind of a channel i promise you every single thing that comes out of my mouth is as honest and as trustworthy and as genuine as i can possibly make it because i decided a long time ago again i've been blessed to do this a long old time that there is no point putting on a front there's no point putting on a character unless you know you're doing some kind of comedy nonsense because people see right through it even more so in 2024 and i like to think whatever i have been able to build up since 2016 or ever the flub it was is because people were able to watch me and go man that's just a dude that wants to enjoy wrestling and if you approach anything like that all of a sudden you do enjoy the bad bits a little bit more sometimes the bad bits become the best bits and then what are you meant to do i watch wrestling to be entertained right so if i walk away from anything and i feel that entertainment gland go off or it kind of speaks to me i'm like you did your job and that's all that matters entertainment doesn't have to be black and white and that would suck anyway so let's say we see a really really good promo segment it leads to a really really good wrestlemania caliber match obviously i'm going to enjoy that but if i then see a match that totally falls apart but it's making me giggle as you see people desperately try to make up for it that still counts as entertainment it still does it's still enjoyable and it all depends on what we do afterwards let's take the barbed wire death match exploding death match in aew i watched that back the other day and it made me laugh it doesn't go well and bless them all because they knew this they all came out and talked about it but how did they deal with it the next day or the next time on dynamite they made a joke out about it and they laughed and ever since then it just makes the whole thing far more entertaining to me because we all know we're in the same conversation 
position, kind of winking and nodding like, oh, well, that didn't go to plan, but we turned it into something that can be a little bit fun. And who cares that we didn't have proper explosions? The only person that is allowed to be properly mad about that is poor Eddie Kingston, who had to act like he died. But even then, he just said, well, I was really, I was really anxious. I was really nervous. I thought I was going to die. And that's why I passed that in the middle of the ring. I don't know why I've chosen that as my example, but I totally have. But, you know, this did happen over the weekend, and somebody was so flabbergasted that I dare reply to them in a similar tone. And they use that stupid phrase, oh, the positive guy has shown his true side. That is absolutely ridiculous. You don't think I have depth to me as a person? You don't think I'm not a three-dimensional character? Of course I am. And once again, you don't get to come into somebody's personal space and call them an asshole and don't expect them to return fire and say, well, you're an asshole too. And nine times out of ten, what I'll actually do is I'll respond in an overly nice way to try and wind you up. But that has nothing to do with positivity, right? It doesn't. It just doesn't. That is a stupid excuse for you, not you personally, but the raw you, to try and be an absolute dick. But there you go. If you've ever, ever pondered why I gave something an up or why I didn't give something a down or I did give something a down, it's because I genuinely think about it and I make sure I can stand behind whatever I say. Otherwise, there's no point to any of these videos and I may as well just spout out hate all the time because you can go out there and find a lot of channels right now that I don't necessarily agree with that are being super negative Nancys and they're doing flipping well. And more power to them, man. If they found a niche and they found that audience, I don't particularly like the rage that it builds up in some people but once more you're allowed to do whatever the hell you want and it's not for me to say otherwise i don't want that man wrestling has been so good to me during some of the harder times of my life i would rather remember the power that it can give you and the smile that it can put on your face now we are actually talking like we're doing a teletubbies episode so we're just going to end it there but it's something that popped into my head I couldn't think of any other content to make today, so I thought, damn it, I'm making this video. There is a comment box down there, so if you'd like to come call me an idiot, you're more than allowed. Now, of course, please do like the video, share the video. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to like this one and subscribe. Leave a comment, hit the ding ding notification bell and click the video on the screen for more up-to-date wrestling chats. Probably the best idea. Otherwise, isgrillamind.com forward slash Simon. If you want to get all angry with bodybuilding supplements, but they are the best. They just are. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Very proud to say that Anthony Agogo, Agogo Fitness, his new app goes live tomorrow on Tuesday, the 16th of July. Use code Simon20 to get money off. It's a really, really good app. It really helps you trying to get in shape and you want to do it from the confines of your own home. Simon316 on Instagram, Twitter, and threads. And of course, now you're all going to come and call me a dick munch, which I totally understand. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo for personalized videos. Love doing those. Pro wrestling tees for dumb shirts like this. Same as Samson Athletics. It's all in the description down there. That's my one rant for the year, okay? We'll be back in 2025 with another rant. Unless I'm ranting about wrestling specifically, but that's my dumb internet wrestling community rant. Sound good? Awesome. Shake hands. Goodbye.